So we're back working on this 2011, uh, I think it's a Sierra 2500 HD with the Dirty Max. And we have to change this anti-lock brake control module today. I've got a new one uh, from GM. It was a few days to get. There's the part number. And it has to be flash programmed once it's installed. Now the retaining screws that hold it onto the ABS pump motor assembly are pretty rusty, so we're going to have to see if we can get those out. We'll pick up when we got them off. So I managed to get the four screws out. Just picked out the dirt from the, the two top ones were actually the worst, but they came out. This little ratchet came in handy with the 90 degree drive. But look at the module. It's obviously burnt. Now, I'm pretty sure this these two large connectors go to the pump motor inside, so I'm going to measure that and make sure it's not shorted. But this is definitely fried. No signs of moisture getting in there. These are all individual solenoids. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 solenoids on there. They control the, uh, the various circuits to isolate and dump the brake pressure when required. So we're going to clean up the module or the base of the ABS unit and uh, make sure that we get all the oxidation off of there. I think I'm going to measure the resistance of that pump motor just to be safe. Well, I read 0.23 ohms across it, so it's pretty low, but it is an electric motor. It's not open. Across those two leads, I got the uh, mating surface here cleaned off. I can't see anything else wrong, so we're going to go ahead and install the module and see what happens. So there's the module reinstalled. I put a little bead of gray RTV around the outside perimeter. Now next we've got to put this connector back together and take these jumpers out. These jumpers are to uh, continue the CAN bus signal to the trailer brake control module. Although it doesn't really need it to run. If this was gas, you would have to do this for sure, otherwise it wouldn't run because the uh, fuel pump driver module back there is CAN bus through this ABS controller. So I'm going to blow this connector out, check the pin grip on these terminals and uh, put everything back together. So there's the module reinstalled, harness taped up, dielectric grease around the outside perimeter of the connector to help keep the moisture out, Stabilitin 22A on the terminals to enhance conductivity. Now we gotta program it. So my internet was down so I had to use my phone as a mobile hotspot so I wasn't able to videotape because I used my phone. The service programming procedure but I've gone ahead and programmed the ABS module. Now we're going to do a network scan using the snap-on scan tool. So we're going to try a, a network code scan again or clear. I've cycled the key. I still got the battery charger on and maintainer on it. Reads the VIN. That's good. Code scan. There shouldn't be any codes because the, the service programming system should have cleared out all the codes at the end as I executed a network code clear. Now it talked to the ABS, that's good. Let's see if it talks to the trailer brake control module because that was where we had an issue before. Low plug module, instrument cluster, keyless entry. How far are we through? 10 modules. I think there was 13 or 14 before. 13 without the ABS, so 14. Radio, theft deterrent, tire pressure, and trailer brake control, transfer case, vehicle communication. I think that's it. Looks like that's it. So it did do a network code clear at the end of the service programming procedure. Saving a report here now. Let's go back and see how many controllers 
it was uh, 16. I think we only got into 14 before because of the network issues. So we're going to take this for a road test, but I'm sure it's okay now. Thanks for watching.